All right, hello fellow coder, welcome back to this next, uh, hopefully exciting lesson of the uh, Fresh Vote series. So, in this one, I promise to refactor the code base, um, and I'll explain why I'm refactoring. Uh, so we have on in the feature controller, we are returning uh, returning a new comment and putting it on the model called comment is the uh, key. So key comment value is a new comment object. That is going into the feature.html page uh, inside of this form. <clears throat> so this form has comment.text, uh, which is uh, when you add a root level comment root level comment. So uh, yeah, that's what that's all about. Now, the problem might arise inside of the uh, fragment here, where inside the fragment, we also have, we're iterating through a, you know, a thread of comments, um, and we're assigning each one as we're doing a th uh, each, so going through a for each loop for each of these comments in the thread. Um, we're naming the object, the time leaf representation of the object, we're naming it comment. So there's a bit of a name uh, collision here that could be going on. So the first thing I wanna to do to see if we can resolve this is just to give it a better name. So instead of just comment, make it root comment. In which case, in our feature.html page, uh, this comment.text, well really any reference to the to comments, um, we need to update. So I'm just sort of flipping through and looking for where we are so really it's just here. So root comment. And now that's gonna rename this ID to be root comment as the ID. Do I, I'm searching up here by button, by form, and we're taking this and splitting property. That's the forms ID. Yeah, well, first of all, I'm calling this comment ID. This is actually not a comment ID. This is the form ID. Uh, but anyway, well, anyway, that's fine. So, well, actually, <laughs> it's technically not fine because we're, this is, so this is the form. I'm, I'm getting off topic now. So reply form and form. So this is a, uh, the object we're going for here is we're, we're grabbing all the forms on the screen and then we're grabbing the IDs of the form so yeah, technically, ultimately we get, but this is just a bad name. It's not comment ID, it's really form ID, but it's not really the form ID because it's like more like the form descriptor. Ugh, this is just a bad name of a comment or of a, um, we'll call this form ID string. <laughs> uh, let's see, you know what? Let's just say let form ID equal that, and then just reassign, no, I can't reassign it. Um, form ID, what is this? Form ID split, splot, split. And actually we're just doing reply form anyway. We're just depend, so, <laughs> so this is just me being silly. Um, Cause really what we want to do here is we just want to find the, property ID and call that the form ID. That's why I'm running into these problems. And we don't want to split it because we don't need to split it, right? There. So, because we're doing, we were, did you see what we're doing? We're taking the string reply form and appending it to the quote unquote comment ID, which is what we were doing in the previous thing. Um, but this is not the comment ID anymore from up here. This is actually the form ID. So we don't need to do these additional <laughs> operations. So there you go, a little bit of refactoring there. Um, we'll need to make sure that still works. Uh, this is the hiding logic to hide, <clears throat> um, use to hide uh, currently open or currently displayed uh, child comment forms. Uh, and I saw an error up here. What's this error? Invalid type code? What? Stream corruption exception? I've never seen this one before. Let's restart again. Let's see if that just goes away. I've just never seen that. Yeah, I think that was just a weird little, that's almost like a spring bug or something like that. Anyway, let's refresh the page and let's go ahead and log in. Okay, 
So let's make sure that it still hides the, the stuff appropriately. Good, so we didn't break that code. Phew. Now the other thing is, so root comment uh, is now called, well, we, we renamed it to root comment down here. Uh, where'd it go? Uh, here, root comment. Now, the problem with this is now when we click uh, submit right here to add the comment for the root comment, um, it's gonna go to the comments endpoint and it's not gonna be called comment anymore. It's now gonna be called root comment because we just changed the name of it, okay? Um, so what, and now it's gonna, right, because this is, we're, we're trying to handle two situations here with our code. So really we could say if root comment dot, I don't know, get text, you know, is uh, is not blank essentially, string utils dot is empty, is not empty, then we do one thing, otherwise we do something else, right? Uh, let's see. That, it sort of helps to break the logic down. I guess we could just make this into a plain old else statement. Although I think it's safer with an else if here. We could create a new comment here. And do this stuff up here. And we could just completely separate the logic, right? Um, and we can extract this, so I can do Alt Shift uh, M to extract a method, and we'll call this, you know, populate comment. I don't know, metadata almost. It's not necessarily metadata, but kind of is. So that way, the populate com comment metadata can be extracted into um, its own thing, its own method, and then we could then. Uh, do that here and the comment repo dot save could go up here call it root comment although yes we are sort of repeating the same thing twice but I don't really want to have a save inside of a inside of a method call like this because it doesn't necessarily say save in it in this method so I don't want to hide a save comment into something that sounds like it shouldn't save anything because I literally called it populate um, I could call it populate and save comment meta metadata, but um, yeah, I'll just leave it like that for now. Uh, let's see, is there anything else in here that needs to happen? I don't think so. So that's a somewhat of a refactor. Um, that's one step. But so now first, let's make sure we didn't break anything. So let's go back and log in. Boom, ba -doom. Make sure everything still works okay so let's add a root level comment I don't even know what comment we're on 21 I think test comment number 21 not that it really matters so we're coming in here does root comment yeah so root comment is now populated so that's good so it comes in here populates the comment metadata now cool we have a created date we have a feature it's assigned to now yeah everything looks uh, good save it it saves, fantastic. So we'll have a comment 21. And if we click reply down here, test comment number 22. And it should be a, so the root comment text should have nothing. Yeah, it's empty, good. And the parent ID is not null. Yeah, so then it goes in here, finds that stuff, sets it, populates the metadata. So let's take a look at the comment object here. Yeah, beautiful, that looks perfect, yeah. Cool. So that's a, I mean, it's a little bit better yeah, and it works good. It's a little bit better, right? There's kind of more of a, a, a separation here of the code. Um, it's a little bit easier to understand, but ultimately what I was wondering is uh, if we could make this work in, and I don't, this might be a complete distraction now and I'm probably gonna throw all this code away, but now th there shouldn't be a name conflict anymore over here. So um, actually, you know what? It, it's, it's kind of a waste of time. I don't think that's worth uh, going down that rabbit hole. So basically what we have now is we have uh, sort of resolved the issue of the duplicate 
um, name collision thing going on where one was, you know, placed on the model. The comment was actually on the model, but now comment is no longer on the model. Uh, now instead, uh, root comment is on the model. And this comment is really only a read only. It's not bound to anything between the front end and the back end. Uh, it's just, we're straight up reading it, which is why we can display the text here, uh, but we won't be able to bind it to anything. So this sort of, uh, you know, solution is, not the, not the most ideal solution because we're not really really leveraging um, time leafs binding agents that that it uses, but uh, you know this still works. We can still use name and ID ourselves, and that is it's just the old school way of doing it, right? That's that's the plain old HTML way of doing it. Sending this as a part of a form, uh, wherever the form is here, you know, sending a, uh, a um, uh, an input element as part of the form and it's being sent as part of the request um, to the post request to the the endpoint that it's calling um, and we're just sending it as the name so we use this name to uh, intercept it on the other side on the on the back end uh, which is over here right we do a request param um, and there you have it right now we've separated our, our logic a little bit here I can add a comment and say you know uh, save the uh, a root level comment um, here versus, you know, I could put this into the new line and say, save a child comment, uh, child level comment here, you know, something like that. So I think that'll work. That's, you know, a little bit cleaner still not the best that we have to separate it into two different saves because really a comment should just be a comment should be a comment is a comment is a comment right why do we need to have two different ways to save the same thing well it, it's two different ways to save the same thing because you know they're, they're being treated differently here um in any case i don't want to get too bogged down in these specific details of this commenting logic what i want to do now is move on um let me just refresh my uh server here what i want to do is move on to uh bigger and better things where we can actually get into um you know the upvoting concept right i think that's probably the next thing that we should look at in our fresh vote series which is you know getting to be one of the last and final things in our fresh vote series so um first is the status of the of the features so as a uh, uh an owner of a product we should be able to uh, change the status uh, of the uh, feature. So this might turn into something like a dropdown where you can just change the dropdown and then click save. Um, we can leave comments now, great. But then we should be able to see uh, a list of all the features. Uh, and I think I had a view, and if I don't have a view, I'll, we'll have to create one. Uh, being able to view all of the products, um, is that right? No, no, no. All the features. I guess it's this this uh, this view here. We want to be able to see. Yes, this is the right view. We want to be able to see all the feature requests for a particular product and be able to upvote versus downvote and uh, and have it work in such a way that we only have a, a limited number of upvotes uh, that we can actually give out. Right. So we have to implement that functionality where uh, you know we can only upvote certain a certain number of feature requests. And um, yeah, so that's going to be the next logical steps here. And then it's pretty much, I mean, that's pr pretty much the MVP, right? We're, we're getting close to the, the, the MVP point, the minimum viable product point of this particular um, Fresh Votes product. Uh, other than, you know, making it look prettier than it, it currently is. But yeah, maybe, you know, adding this to make it look like a card or something like that. Who knows? Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that is, th those are going to be the next steps. And I guess in the next lesson, I think I want to dive into upvoting just because uh, changing, being able to change this as a, like a drop down menu of stuff is not really that exciting. Maybe we'll save that for the end. Um, I want to focus on the upvoting slash downvoting um what, can you downvote? No, we don't have downvotes here, do we? You can upvote, and that's it. At least I think so. We'll have to look into that in the next lesson as well. It's been a while since I've looked at the uh, requirements for this guy. So, all right, cool. We'll we'll move on now to bigger and better things, and hopefully wrap up this series in the next dozen videos or so. We'll see how long it'll take. 
Uh, in any case, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care of yourself. Happy learning, and bye for now.